Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Sebastian and today Adam, Catherine, Juliet and Juliana will present the results of our research in artisanal and small scale mining in Ethiopia. Artisanal and small scale mining or ESM is destruction of minerals by manual labor, usually by groups or individuals, with minimal or no mechanization. Often these projects are outside of the legal frameworks, are informal. Um, the SAM project, which is the supporting of the neutral mines of Peru, is a project developed by the Canadian International Resource Development Institute in collaboration with the Ministry of Mines of the Province of Ethiopia. Now, why ASM? ASM is key because it produces 20% of gold and diamond global supply. Approximately 40 million people work on ASM, but 75% of these workers are informal which means that the projects are outside of the legal and economic framework of the regions or countries where the projects are developed. Now, why this is important in Ethiopia? Approximately 2% of Ethiopia's GDP is mining. In 2017, 11% of total exports of Ethiopia were gold. 35% of the workforce that Ethiopia has on ASM are women, and 94% of these projects are informal. In the map that you can see up there, you have the main areas where minerals are located. These minerals are the main, uh, the main reserves, but also they are located all across the country. And these areas are located also between different regions of the country. Why um, a policy on ASM is key? If a policy is implemented, understanding the local context where ASM is developed, it can bring economic and social benefits for the country and the population. However, if this policy is implemented without understanding the local context, this could be bring problems with environmental and health issues or lack of gender inclusion. Okay. Our research has three main themes. The first one is policy, legal, and regulatory framework. The second one is organizational and structure. And the third one is gender inclusion. These three topics were identified by CIRGI with the development of the SAM project in collaboration with the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum in Ethiopia. Our methodology included a field visit trip to Ethiopia where our team was able to interview key stakeholders from the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum and other key institutions of the country. These interviews gave us a deep understanding about the three topics that I mentioned before. However, our research also identified other three topics like access to the data, access to capital and technology, and capacity building. As I mentioned before, these three topics are also key, but they are not part of our research. So we are going to be focused on the three main topics that I explained in the previous slide. Now, Ada will explain the first topic. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, yeah, so I'll be talking about the first theme, which is the regulatory, legal, and policy frameworks within which uh, artisanal mining operates in Ethiopia. So um, generally what we found was most issues that, were, that came up from uh, interview respondents revolved around two large policy issues. The first problem was um, a lack of coordination between uh, stakeholders. So that's at the, the federal, the uh, regional, and the community levels. And so this, this communication disconnect uh, was both vertical between administrative levels and horizontal. And most of the information was largely top down from the federal level down. Um, so there was a low level of community engagement and uh, incorporation of stakeholder or local perspectives in uh, decision making. Um, the second problem we identified was um, it's sort of a one size fits all approach to most policies, um, and specifically related to artisanal mining. This manifested in the licensing structure. So licenses are granted for two years without extension, and this this in itself provides a barrier for several reasons. Uh, the first, of which it doesn't take into account the mineral type, so different minerals have different <coughs> requirements. Uh, mining for gemstones requires physical uh, root excavation, uh, whereas uh, construction minerals like sand and gravel are much less uh, labor intensive. Um, the distance to market centers is a large factor. There's only a few uh, handful of market centers in the, in the country, and so artisanal mining is located uh, in remote regions, so traveling uh, to these remote centers or from these communities to the centers 
is uh, difficult, dangerous, and expensive, which provides a, or creates a barrier. Um, oops. And uh, um, seasonal workers, uh, agricultural workers, or women also face um, additional challenges because they have um, economic uh, duties or uh, familial or uh, household uh, duties that they're they're required to to, uh, to complete as well. And so it it provides uh, it creates a, a disincentive for them because they have less time to actually <coughs> find. Oops. Um, and then of course uh, the, the the regulations also state that only individuals and as, uh, small and medium enterprises are able to uh, apply for a, a license, which excludes cooperatives or other organizational structures. Um, so of which Catherine will talk about that. Thank you, Adam. Um, so I'll talk about the second theme, which is organizational structures in artisanal mining. Um, so to enable artisanal miners function well in a formal economy, it's important for them to be provided with um, skills, knowledge, and improved access to resources. And this is not, cannot be easily achieved with individual miners. That's why it's important to have them in groups to enable them to get training. Um, also, this facilitates um, a same formalization, also improves their bargaining power, um, and also it increases the potential of gender inclusion in the sector, whereby women can benefit more if they are in groups rather than treating minors as indi individuals. Um, and all these benefits can be achieved if there is a a proper and steady uh, policy system in a country. Um, and looking at Ethiopia uh, in this timeline, we can see that from 2004, uh, there was an establishment of uh, mining cooperatives under the Federal Cooperatives Agency, FC FCA, whereby miners were required to uh, either form cooperatives or be in SMEs or individuals or in any group to get mining licenses. Um, but in 2010, um, there was also another proclamation whereby uh, miners were only required to form cooperatives and get mining licenses, but with the limitation of only two years without renewal. And this also was a challenge because they were supposed to move, after the two years, they were supposed to move to special small scale mining, which requires high capital and advanced technology. But in 2013, there was an amendment of, of, the, of the 2010 proclamation, um, whereby the government decided to get rid of the mining cooperatives with the argument that they are not inclusive of everyone in the community. So uh, miners were only required to be in, maybe to form SMEs or uh, get mining licenses as individuals and not cooperatives anymore. So this resulted into uh, formation of different groups in the country, uh, whereby there were uh, SMEs, cooperatives, associations, mining development groups um, in different regions. But the challenge with this is that uh, all these groups currently are not, uh, they don't have a clear structure and they are not formally recognized by the government. So they don't really get the benefit that miners should get as a group. Uh, so. And currently, also the uh, Ministry of Mining in Ethiopia is looking to have a, a proper or a suitable organizational structures that miners can benefit can benefit from. Uh, so it's important that whatever policy that is there reflects the needs of different people in the community. So stakeholder engagement and other grassroots initiatives are needed to enable the ministry and together with the community, come up with a suite of organizational structures that um, the miners can benefit from. So, Quilin will now talk about the findings of our third team. Thanks, Catherine. So, before we jump into it, gender inclusion and ASM, let's first take a look at the national landscape. Ethiopia has long been a part of the global movement to promote gender equality. The main strategy it has adopted is gender mainstreaming, uh, which is de developed by the UN Economic and Social Council back in 1995. So the strategy highlights the process to assess 
uh, the implementation of any plan action for both men and women, and uh, incorporate their concerns and experience uh, to the whole decision making process so both gender could benefit equally. Ethiopia has tried to internalize the strategy by making its own gender mainstreaming framework, which has taken effect in many aspects. Uh, but there, the, the performance is relatively weak in the mining industry, especially the ASM sector. Um, women's voice is still unheard, though they're sharing the work burden with men. So it's partially due to the uh, particular feature of ASM. Um, as for example, most of the miners are located in remote area, so that policy intervention is hard to reach. Uh, but still, uh, there is doable space. So these are the key findings based on our uh, research. First, uh, there is a lack of framework within the administrative body. Uh, the ministry has developed a, a gender mentoring guideline back in 2012, but the ratification has been since postponed. Um, and secondly, uh, the gender consideration is uh, marginalized and uh, the gender directory is in short of the resources such as found and human capital. And uh, um, third is that um, the current gender mainstream effort is rhetorical. So behind these facts are the challenges facing the ministry. Um, first, uh, the gender uh, mainstreaming strategy itself is now legally binding, uh, which implies that the ministry should uh, take a more proactive and creative approach to institutionalize the gender mainstreaming strategy. Uh, and also, and again, a lack of communication. So uh, it's making hard for the ministry and the gender directorate to position gender development within the whole ASM development process. And last but not least, uh, gender and ASM is relatively under-researched. Uh, so that implies a relatively limited resource that the uh, ministry could refer to to accommodate ASM concerns and uh, situations. So all of these facts deserve our attention, and our policy recommendation will be uh, talked in uh, discussed in our last part by Juliana. So with these high level recommendations, uh, <coughs> um, we will pro provide some high level, high -level recommendations um, that link to the three themes that we identified. So the first is to engage in more proactive stakeholder engagement. If the ministry hopes to achieve formalization, it must create policies that take into account stakeholder needs. So this would involve more communication between directorate at the federal level, as well as all the way down to the community level through the regions. This would also include uh, more communication with stakeholders such as um, the National Bank, for example, or federal cooperative agencies, which are identified through the stakeholder enterprises. So, in terms of official action, um, there could be a creation of a, state, of a stakeholder engagement directorate, um, which would encompass all of the action taken into account here. Um, and within that, there could be working groups with regional representatives included in those working groups. Um, and obviously, more coordination with the, with the National Bank and federal cooperative agencies so that these structures can be reinstated and officially recognized by the ministry. The second recommendation is to create flexibility in regulation policy and legal frameworks. Um, one of the major barriers, as Adam mentioned, is that regulations are still currently a one-size-fits-all, and as such, they fail to meet their primary goal, um, part of which are to sort of encourage organizational structures and mining and to promote gender inclusion. So we provide um, this recommendation of greater inclusion. Um, so creating flexibility through consultation um, could, could actually help to achieve some of the goals that we were talking about earlier, including the licensing system. So this could be longer licenses for women, uh, women's groups who require more time uh, for household or family duties. Um, this could also take into account the different minerals uh, that are mined in different regions, as well as the seasonality of mining for agricultural miners. So the third recommendation is um, to sort of engage in um, more active gender inclusion. Um, so we believe that if the ministry does take into account stakeholder needs as well as flexibility and regulation, it will be better equipped to 
uh, to sort of address the issues and needs unique to women in ASM. And adding gender considerations um, could actually help to implement the National Gender Mainstreaming Guideline, uh, which has been around for a few years, but not necessarily implemented. Um, and with, with more, more women uh, engaged, the socioeconomic benefits of gender equality could actually be better understood by all and more visible. So with these recommendations, uh, we, we hope that this will be treated as a call to action for the ministry um, and its associated stakeholders. And uh, with since the, the artisanal mining industry is, has so much potential, we hope that the needs of the community will be met first and foremost, and we believe that it will develop best through this. Excellent presentation. Uh, I have two questions. One is um, the presentation does not touch upon uh, the major sector of either state operated or foreign operated mining operations and their relations with uh, ASM activities. So I wonder if you could elaborate because when I was doing field research in Africa, uh, in DRC, in um, Zambia in Gabon, I noticed substantial in some areas that are in complementary to each other because the artisan activities are not being touched or bothered to be done by other major mining companies. In other cases, they're actually in competition. So that's the first question. Second question, I'm, I'm still a little bit confused about this major component of gender inclusion in your presentation. Uh, if I saw correctly in the beginning of your slide, you're saying that artisan and small mining activities have a majority of women involved in that. Are you, is that not, not the case? I just want to clarify if many women, uh, large percentage of them are involved in these um, ASM activities, what, what's the gender inclusion here means? In terms to formalize their role or being equally treated? Uh, I didn't get it. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. So I'll uh, take the first question of um, the interaction with large scale mining um, or foreign companies mining in Ethiopia as well. Um, and so there is large scale mining in Ethiopia. Um, currently, it's, it's very, very uh, begin, the beginning of it. Um, there's a lot of barriers that they face as well um, with the with policy and Legal frameworks as well, but we're specifically focusing on, on artisanal mining. And in, with, within Ethiopia, licenses for artisanal mining are only given to Ethiopians. And within each region, it's it's really difficult to be from one region, move to another one, and then operate in that because there's such um, there's such strong ties to ethnicity between within each region. And so, generally, what we heard was uh, miners are from the region; they're, they're from the local community, and those are the ones that are actually taking and uh, acting in the, in the market. Um, so there, there is some competition between large-scale mining and uh, artisanal mining, um, especially historically, like it, it's been happening, but currently large-scale mining is, it's, it's facing its own problems, um, its own issues, um, and also the, the uh, Ethiopian government, uh, the Ministry of Mines, I guess, 
there is a new minister, um, and he's very, very strongly advocating for the development of the artisanal mining sector because um, in other countries, a lot of um, they, they open up their, their borders to um, large scale mining companies, and the mining companies come in, they extract the resource, and then although much of the wealth doesn't actually remain within Ethiopia. And so, our, supporting the artisanal market first, or the sector, um, is, is an effort to, to keep <coughs> some of the, the profits or the profits from their resources within the country and lift the, um, the people out of, or lift them up um, in, in economic status. So I want to answer your second question about gender inclusion. I believe from Sebastian's slide that it's 35% of women um, are participating in ASM. So the thing is not participation, it's actually how women are disproportionately affected by ASM activities. This is particularly the case for um, child women of childbearing age um, or women who already have children, pregnant women. Um, there is a lot of danger associated with uh, with artisanal mining and a lot of exposure to dangerous chemicals, um, especially in the informal market where this kind of thing isn't regulated. So what we're trying to achieve is not more female participation, although we do believe that at the um, decision-making level, that would actually benefit the communities. Uh, what we're focusing on is including gender <coughs> considerations within policy so that it trickles down to the community level, so that women are not disproportionately affected. Um, obviously, the roles of men and women are different. Um, some women can't, you know, man have the same capacity for manual labor as men, and we absolutely recognize that. But they do have different roles. Um, they're, they should be equally recognized for that, and they should receive as much financial um, sort of remuneration for that. So I hope that answers your question. Hi. Um, in terms of your recommendation, um, can you address the best type of organizational structure and co-ops? Um, yeah, and, and is that your recommendation in terms of uh, best type of organizational structure for formalization? Um, and, and what was your finding related to that? Um, okay, what we understood from our client is that um, <laughs> They are looking to to um, have co-ops as the structure, but they are looking for ways to, you know, simplify it or make it more suitable for Ethiopia. So what we are recommending is not for them to just have co-ops per se, but um, we, in our report we've given different recommendations for because in Ethiopia, in the nine regions, they have very different. Um, characteristics even the minors because it, what we've noticed is that in some regions cooperatives could work better than SMEs and in some regions maybe SMEs or associations could work better than cooperatives so what we've recommended uh, basically is for the like this stakeholder engagement also having different um, grassroots initiatives whereby they government or the ministry can work together with, com with the community in different regions to come up with the suitable organizational structure for every region. Yeah. All right, I have uh, two questions. So one is that I know when you were in Ethiopia, you spent some time meeting with other Canadian funded projects and some of those I recall touched on gender and also on, on organizational forms. So I wonder if you can talk about opportunities for Suri to perhaps work in collaboration with other Canadian funded projects. And my second question is, I'm wondering what were the biggest surprises for you when you went to the field compared with the research you'd done before you left? Thank you, good presentation. So I'll take the first question. Um, yeah, we met with um, a project called STEM, and it's, I can't remember the acronym, but it's, they're just supporting, it more on the, the grassroots level, um, is they, they're doing uh, their work within one region, the T-Grid. Um, and so they're, they're, they're on the same level in the same building. They operate in the same building as some in, um, in Ethiopia. And so there is some, some collaboration or some, some discussions, I guess. But uh, from what we got, um, we, didn't, we got some good information from them, but not necessarily uh, the impression that there is much collaboration. And so um, we do believe, and 
this is something we actually talked about after while, while we were in Ethiopia that it would it would be great to see the SUM project merge or at least collaborate with the STEM project so that there is the federal presence of the SUM focusing on the, the federal level down, but then also the STEM project which is really focusing on the community level up. And so I think well we, we believe that merging these two projects together would would really uh, engage with the with with the vertical integration of, of all perspectives. Um, for the second question, I think that maybe what the dynamics between the different regions of the federal government was something that we read about it, but I think that going to the and understanding better how uh, strong is the component of ethnicity in terms of how policies are implemented or how the relation between regions is managed was kind of uh, one of the things that uh, surprised us. Like, uh, for instance, when we were um, talking for, with the National Bank, which is responsible for buying the gold that is produced by ASM uh, workers uh, nationally, um, they explained us how the different dynamics, um, if um, an agency of the National Bank is closer to this mindset, but is, is in the other region, people would prefer to travel more in order to sell the gold in the branch that is in the region, even though the National Bank is a national entity that represents so I think that dynamic was quite interesting to understand uh, better on the field. Thanks. Um, there's a lot of people with questions, so I'm going to ask two, but if you only answer one, that's fine to give other people a chance. Um, the first question I have is um, that the way this has been presented is with the artisanal and small scale mining is kind of imagining people kind of actually digging stuff out of the ground. But of course, that's only the first step in a larger supply chain. And I'm just wondering if you can address how these recommendations that you provided are actually intending to incorporate those other levels um, of, um, of mining and what happens once things are mined. And my other question, I guess if it's related, is um, with your recommendations, um, what do you anticipate to be the response to recommendations? Like what's going to happen next with these with your ideas? Thank you. <laughs> oh, right, of course, the value addition chain. Um, so, as Sebastian mentioned in one of the first slides, 94% approximately of the, of the ASM uh, market or sector is informal. And so that means that people are extracting gold or resources and then selling it to the illicit market, um, which, which then is ex exterior to the, the uh, I guess, the, inc the economic sector of, of the country. And so I guess the, the idea, our idea is, is first formalize and get people to bring them back into the formal market and then, and I guess at the same time, establish the, the, the value chain, um, which, which is, is very lacking in Ethiopia. Uh, most minerals are exported raw or very, very little, little uh, value addition to them. Um, and it, there's, there's so many aspects to artisanal mining that it's hard, it's hard to cover everything within, in the time that we had. So there, there are some, some areas that we would have liked to uh, develop more. One is uh, access to geological data, which is a great, um, it's a huge barrier as well. Um, but then, of course, along the value chain with uh, processing and upgrading and uh, cutting and polishing, those are all things that are, the ministry has, is, is aware of them, and they're, they're working on them. And I think the SUM project, which is a larger umbrella project that we're just operating within, these are all things that aspects that are going to be addressed um, by the SUM project, but we just took a piece of it, and it wasn't in our scope. So that's why we didn't, didn't really focus on that. For your second one, I think that um, well, a lot of this, a lot of implementation of these recommendations is also kind of political, but I think that our research and also the implementation of some project like CIRDI is quite in the right moment, right? Currently, I think uh, the ministry is developing a new mining uh, policy plan, so there's a space, so there's a space to find recommendations that could be included. So I think that's a good political moment. In addition, the election of the new prime ministry last year was kind of also a good. Um, I mean, it seems as a positive sign for things like gender and issues like that because he um, appointed 50% of his cabinet and now are women. So I think that uh, we are kind of the political tracks, in the, in the right moment for political changes. So maybe these recommendations could be part of them. I think we are positive and we believe that they will try to put these recommendations in uh, the mining policy. Um, I think one of the issues um, is that it's not necessarily a question of capacity or um, 
for funding, I think it's mostly a question of attitude. So the, the sort of communication between directorates, that's all part of the implementation of what we're, of the recommendations that we're providing. So it would also be um, a more collaborative attitude as opposed to um, one where, where there's sort of some rent seeking possibly. Um, and that would be something that we hope will be encouraged. All right, thank you. Really, really excellent slides, by the way. First laughs. I see you all have futures in the advertising business. <laughs> uh, but two words I want to ask you about that I don't think I heard in the presentation. Security and safety in the context of a country that has some internal divisions and particular forms of violence. Uh, can you, how did that factor into what you were able to look at in your study and what the recommendations so we actually did were able to meet three regional representatives, although we weren't able to meet anyone from the community level. And one of the regional representatives noted that some of the issues are mostly in the border regions, where actually if there are, you know, let's say 100 miners uh, in a mining site, um, that they actually need 10 armed guards around the mining site in order to keep those people safe. And that's why we're recommending cooperative structure, which would actually help to bring more people together and ask for result security. Um, this is also a question for getting to the mining, uh, the, the market centers. So a lot of the times if they're going to the market centers in trucks, they actually need to guard those um, and be armed. So that was definitely something that we did touch upon, but it is outside the scope of our research. So it's something that we hope the Sun Project will take into consideration. Just one little thing to add to that is that uh, with our behavioral research ethics board um, requirements, we weren't actually able to engage with the local community members. We weren't able to, and it was it was ill advised uh, by the ministry for us to travel outside of 